There he is, got him. That's a real one. That's a real, real one. What is that? Got him, got him. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm all bent up. That's what a trout fishing adventure is all about. How's it going everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to another Addicted video. Before we officially kick this video off, I am so excited to bring the bashes back. That's right. If you guys want to come hang out with me and Jordan and Cameron and Pop Off, come hang out, have some fishing seminars, free pizza, free drinks, absolute amazing time. If any of you guys have been to our bashes, you know we like to throw a good fishing party. So come join us this coming Thursday at Bob's Sporting Goods, July 6th. 6 to 9 p.m. We do it on Thursdays, guys, kind of an after work thing. We've noticed that on the weekends, people just want to go fishing. So that's why we do them on Thursdays. I hope a ton of you guys can make it July 6th at Bob Sporting Goods in Longview, Washington. First official kickoff to the Summer Bash Series. Thanks again, guys. I can't wait to meet all you guys on Thursday and see all you guys again. Now, let's kick off this video where Jordan's going to show you some really cool tricks. Everybody and welcome back to the first addicted trout adventure of the summer. First off, we'll talk about the elephant in the room. It doesn't look like summer, but that's okay. I've never been known to let a little bit of bad weather keep us from having a good time. Today we are waging all-out war with any trout that comes in our way. I got an entire boat full of gear. It's time to go fishing. Let's do it. So when I say we're throwing the kitchen sink at them today, I mean we're throwing the kitchen sink at them today. I got trolling rods, I got spinner rods, I got fly rods, I got bobber rods, I have twitching jigs, I got it all. But we're starting off with what we know works here at first, and that is the Brad's Dodger and the Brad's Mini Cut Plug. The Kokanee Cut Plugs are gonna get it done today. I got this thing set up with a two ounce dropper and my Kokanee Dodger down to my little cut plug. And this is one of my favorites. Scott Call, the owner of Brad's, actually turned me on to this one. This is the little blue and silver with the eye. I think we have an idea of how this one's gonna work. I'm gonna fill you in on a little secret here. The biggest secret that's not a secret in trout fishing, and that is putting bait inside your mini cut plugs. And I got a special bait that we're gonna be using today. One of my absolute favorite. If you learn anything from this episode today, this should be it. Hand me that bag right there. Shrimp. So instead of using power bait, instead of using any kind of scent and anything like that, I'm gonna throw a little chunk of prawn inside this cut plug. And the cool part about any sort of lake, any sort of natural lake system, uh, especially when you're in a lake this size that we're in today, there is always some form of aquatic shrimp in any lake. Um, just basically the micro species that live in the bottom of the lake, there is shrimp in almost every big body of water. It might not be the shrimp that you find in the ocean or, or in any kind of like great lake situation, but it works better than anything I've found. So, so we got the old blue eye with some shrimp in it. Send it down. So the way I like to put this out, the way we're gonna drop this down, we have the downrigger as well, and we'll probably use that if we start seeing some fish at different depths. But the way I like to do this is to gauge how deep I'm going, because we're in 140 feet of water. We're not gonna hit bottom, nor do we really want to. These fish are gonna be up towards the, the higher water columns, feeding on whatever insect life that there is. But the way I'm gonna let my line out is by, by spans of 10, basically. I got about a nine foot rod, so I'm gonna let about a whole rod length out, and I'm gonna lower my tip. So there's 20 feet. We've already gone out about 10. There's 30 feet. I'm gonna slowly lower that down so we don't get any tangles. There's 40 feet. There's 50. And we're gonna go out to about 60 here. We wanna go about halfway down to the bottom or one third. There's 60. Just throw in the rod holder. Let her fish. Oh, we got a mark at about 30. Got a mark at 30 here. It looks like we got some fish right on the bottom, but here's our first mark. I'm gonna turn up my sensitivity a little bit. So here's our first mark we're seeing here, 60 feet. That's about 40 feet. So where we got that set out, about 60 feet behind the boat, we should be in the running with where that fish is sitting in the water column. So that's our first sign. We wanna start identifying where these fish are in this deep water and then start setting our lines to that depth. All right, as if we weren't messing around enough, we're going with the 3.0 mag lip out the back. I got this on my little ultralight rod and I find these little two to six pound ultralights, these SSTs, work these, these 3.0 mag lips or a wiggle wart so freaking well because they have such a nice limber tip. And the thing is, the best part of all is when this thing gets hit, it's an absolute smash. So we're going doubles, double plugs out the back. 
going to run these probably 60, 70 feet, 80 feet back behind the boat. That way, if any fish are getting spooked by the boat, they're going to have time to come back in, see that lure, and strike. I should do it. And out the other side, we're going a two ounce lead, the brads, wee wiggler. I got some crawfish scent, the crawfish stick on that. And you guys will notice here, and you'll see how I do this all day long with these little mini wigs, is I'll take the front hook off. I find I land a lot more fish with just that back hook. So I'm going with that little bit darker kind of gold green color today, a little bit darker sky color, something that's gonna be a little less intrusive, something they're gonna see from a long ways away. Here we go, launching. So the overall goal here and the way we're fishing, we got two rods at about 60, 70 feet. We got one running at about 15. That, that mag lip, that 3.0, will probably only get to about 10 to 15 feet deep. And then we have the two ounces on this mini wiggler at about 50 feet behind the boat. So that's gonna settle out at about 20 feet. So we got an entire water column and an entire section of the lake covered as we're moving through here. And if we need to, if I start seeing fish really deep in the columns, I'm gonna set up the downrigger and we're gonna drop one of these presentations down right in front of their face. But we got it out. Now we have to start doing our figure eights. Start moving back and forth across the lake, kind of breaking this thing apart. See if we can find some fish. Nice still, still there. We got our first fish on of the day. Dodger came through, everybody. Ooh, that looks like a good one. Looks like a good one. I better get the net. Shh, they all always there. I can see him there. He's just towing along. Come to Papa. Oh, he spat it right at the boat. Come to Papa. Oh, he spat it right at the boat. Little rascal. It's all right, let's keep trolling. That is the beauty of using these mini cut plugs too, guys, is the bait stays in them. You can catch fish after fish after fish. The thing can come off and you don't need to rebait. Usually I try to rebait after every couple of hours maybe to make sure we have that fresh scent, but it's as easy as that. Drop it back down, we're fishing again. Here we go, big hit, big hit. Big hit on the plug. Oh, we're in them now. We're in them now. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna take this one easy now. We got a big treble hook on the end of this one. What happens a lot with these littler fish is if you have too big of a hook, they'll come off really easy. I'm gonna actually put it in neutral. We need this guy, we need it to break ice. Okay, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. I'm gonna boat flip him. I'm gonna boat, oh, I think it's a cutthroat. Nope, nope, let's see here, is it a hatchery? Yep, that's our first fish of the day. Whew. All right, before I show you guys this fish, I'm getting my line back out because we are on a hot bite, hot bite. All right, little, let's show the world. Just a beautiful little stalker rainbow. Great way to start today. This lake, we can only keep hatchery trout. So that's our first hatchery trout. You can tell because it's got that adipose fin clip. Really beautiful, like leopard pattern across his back. You can tell this fish has been in the lake a little while. It kind of has that ponder, but that's a nice healthy fish to start the day with. Heck yeah. Oh, we got fish at the, that 30. Should be getting hit any second here. We're marking a fish. Oh boy, that's a good mark. We're about to get that one, I can feel it. Still there? Looks like it. Yeah, he's still there. Bent up. It's all bent up. Woohoo! Oh, it came off. Son of a gun. All right, let me check that really quick. Well, that one was pretty close up. We're good. We're good there. Good? Yep, that one was pretty close up to the surface. Probably only had that down 40, 50 feet. And I'll see that a lot of times, you guys. If you are in a boat like this, we're going to be all over the place today. We're going to be getting out of the boat. We're going to be hiking a creek. We're going to be fishing from the bank here on the lake. So you guys will kind of get to see all the different ways of catching a fish. But one thing I want to comment on is in a situation like this, where you're out in the big water in an area like this where it's 215 feet, if you're not marking fish anywhere through the water column, odds are those fish are within 10 feet of the surface. Because the way a hummingbird depth finder or just about any depth finder works is it, it shoots towards the bottom of the cone. As the cone goes from the boat down to the bottom, it reads a larger scale the further down it reads. So in this situation, if the fish are within the first 10 feet of the water column, you're only scoping basically a very, very narrow window, maybe 20 or 30 feet of that lake as you're going by those fish. So if you're not graphing them, odds are they're shallow. So set your gear a little bit further up towards the surface. I think that's why we're getting them on this one. And that's why we're getting them on this, top, this flat line plug is because those fish are further up in the water column. So if these keep going off, we're gonna adjust these rods over here and see if we can't get all these rods going off. Ooh, we got multiple marks. Multiple marks at 50 and 60. Something's about to happen here, I can feel it. Okay, I'm gonna slow us down just a second. Hi, kiddo. Hi, mister. Oh, you're the cutest. You're the cutest, the cutest, rudest, cutest, tiny. Oh, we're in them, come on. Come on, we got a lot of marks. We got probably five, six fish on the screen right now. We found them. So what's happening here, guys, we got, we got our sonar and then we have our down scan. So this is confirming each one of these. So one, two, three fish, one, two, three fish. 
really neat technology that Hummingbird has. Oh, fuck, look at all those marks. Whoa, now that's a fish. Looks like he's streaking at our stuff, too. Oh, he got him. He's on this rod, he's on this rod. <laughs> yep, he's on there. He's on there good. Oh, that's a good one, too. That's a good one. I'm gonna keep that gear. I think we're gonna double up here. Gotta get wide on one. That's our second plug fish on the wee wig. Come aboard. Come aboard, little guy. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. Yep, he's hatchery. That one's ours. Fish number two. Woo! And so far we've caught a fish on every single presentation. We got one on the Dodger and the, and the KCP. We got one on the big plug. We got one on the little plug. Live action. A lot like the first fish we got, a little bit bigger. They're getting bigger by the minute. That was cool. We really got into a big group of them there. We could see them on the screen. You could see by the way those lines were streaking upwards. Uh, it's usually a good telltale sign that they're actually coming for your gear. And the thing about trout, a lot of times they'll be following your gear for quite a ways before they hit it. So when you see marks like that, stay on the same speed, stay on the same track, and wait for those fish to bite. Fish number two. What are those? I don't know, but it's a lot of them. Holy smokes. All right, everybody, we are marking an absolute metric SHIT load of fish below the boat here. Look at this. We got all these hard marks right under the boat. We've made two or three different passes through them and haven't gotten bit yet. So I'm going to try something crazy, something that's really going to freak you guys out. You ready for it? Yep, that's right. We're going Sculptzilla to the bottom. We got a quarter ounce sculpin jig that I tied myself. I'm going to drop this thing right below the depth finder so I can actually watch it go down right in front of the fish. And we're gonna see what happens. I'm really anxious right now. Let's try it. There's bottom. So again, I want to make this thing. I'm just really, I'm just emulating a little sculpin that's down there swimming around on the bottom. There's bottom. Well, I want you to do is just kind of keep it right in that distance from the bottom. Like almost hit bottom each time. And then just a nice, just that nice little jerk. Not too high or too big, about two foot. You reel back in after nope, you pull nope. it Nope, nope, I want you to just keep it down there like we're just vertical jigging straight okay. out of the boat. You can lay that one down. One's on it. There's a fish on it. Ooh, this is suspenseful everybody. This is something I've never tried for trout like this. I've tried this before for lake trout with our good friend Todd Logan down in Central Oregon and it worked extremely well. This is the first time I've ever tried it in this area that we're in now. So the suspense is killing me. We can see why it's jig on the bottom of the screen. I'm actually casting my little sculpin jig, kind of swimming it along at all different water columns. We're going to see if this works. Oh, he's right in their face. Oh, he's coming at you though. Look at him, he's streaking. He's in you, dude, he's in you. He's right in the middle of the jig. That thing is chasing it down. Oh, bunch of them. Bunch of trout everywhere. Bunch of trout everywhere, okay. Yeah, we're on the hole. Yep. Oh, that's a giant trout. Oh my God, that's a giant trout. Get that spinner in there, Wyatt. It's game time. Oh my goodness. They're all around us, you guys. We're surrounded. I got my twitching jig working here. Wyatt's got a little spinner. We're gonna see what we can make happen. Oh, I got a follower. I got one chasing it. I got one chasing it. Oh, he's right there. Followed it all the way back to the boat. All right, well, my arm's sore and I think we've exhausted our option of the twitching shenanigan. We might try it again, but I got something else. I got another trick up my sleeve. Let's go do it. All right, my next favorite way to catch trout. That's with an addicted trout float, an ultra light rod, and nothing less than a tiny jig head and an addicted red haze micro worm. Stealth is the name of the game here. All right, nothing here in this fast moving water. Let's keep creeping up river and see if we can find another spot these fish might be hiding. 
Might be a really nice cutthroat, you guys. What is that thing? It'll say. Oh, no, just a really, really unique looking rainbow. Come check this out, everyone. Wow, it's like this thing almost has spawning colors on. Very unique looking rainbows that we're finding here today in this lake. This is another hatchery fish, but look at that thing. Seriously, looks like a freaking leopard. You can tell this thing's been in the lake quite a while, and it's made its way up into this little freshwater inlet. It has that really nice golden hue to it. Nice red bar. Wow, all right, let's send this little guy on his way. The addicted worm for the win. Check and mate. Okay, cast number two. There he is, got him. That's a real one. That's a real, real one. What is that? It's chrome and big, it's chrome and big, and he's wrapped up like a bofo. Oh my God, what is this? Oh, that's a huge rainbow, you guys. That's a huge rainbow. Oh God, he's taking me down the rapids. Little no, little no. He's taking me down the rapids. I got him back up. Okay, we're good. Oh my God, what a huge rainbow. Oh my God. Holy smokes, look at this thing. <laughs> Second cast. Wow. What an awesome fish. Look at how pretty and silver that thing is. So I'd say probably 26 inches. And he's gone. Yes! <laughs> That's what a trout fishing adventure is all about. Going from trolling to twitching, to casting spinners, to floating a bobber. We're getting them every way possible, everyone. This is awesome. Let's see if we can get one three casts in a row. Ah, oh, pushed our luck. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. Cast a little bit further up into the rapid there. Well, I guess that's all this hole's given up today. What an incredible experience. One more high five for the road. Let's head back down and find some more fish on a different method. That's a fish, that's a fish, be quiet. That's a big fish. That's a big trout. I'm over here retying why it broke off a spinner while we were up river. And uh, first cast with the micro worm, fish on. Let's grab the net for that. Actually, we won't net it, it's a big trout. In a situation like this, you guys, and a trout this big, one that's been living so long, it's best to not put him in the net. We're not gonna take this thing out of the water because it is a wild fish, we can't keep it. So we're gonna just give you guys a little look-see and we're gonna let it go. Oh, that's a nice one, dude. Look at that trout. Oh my God. Look at that. Oh my goodness. What a beauty, dude. Wyatt, what'd you do? Oh God. Yeah. Wow. What a gorgeous fish. Incredible. Micro worm right in his mouth. See you later, guys. Shooter! Yeah! Awesome! Killer! <laughs> oh, got him! Got him! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! On the twist! On the twist! I'm all bent up. Come to Papa. Come to Papa. Oh god, that's a big fish. Oh, that's a big fish. Oh, he's ripping me up. He is ripping me up. And I got really light line on here, guys. Only got about eight pound test. And that is a giant, giant rainbow. Oh my god. It works. Thank you, Mr. Bill Herzog, for showing me this method. He broke it. He broke it. That was by far the biggest fish of the day. And he took the twitching jig. It's gone. It's gone forever. Well, my arm's sore. I think after all this fish tugging, it's time for a little munch. You think? You see some munch? 
You need a munch? He's still sad about that fish breaking off. It's all right, tiny. Wasn't meant to be ours. This will cheer him up though. A little fish and cracker. Fish and cracker. Fish and cracker. Ah, there it is. Didn't forget it today. The Jordan forgotten item of the day it was not a fork. Not this time. Today's menu is some artisan cracker, a little bit of rosemary, a little bit of rosemary cracker. This looks like canned steelhead, actually. Oh, sealed for freshness. Yum, look at those jalapenos. Look at all that goodness. All right, we'll give the first bite to the sad guy. Here, gotta get the rest of it. So gentle. What a good boy. Mm. Mm. That's all I gotta say about that. Yeah, so a little cracker. Instead of mixing it all up, we're just gonna go a little scooper. A little scooper of mayo. A little scooper of fish. Mm. That's a well balanced lunch right there. On the go. Mm. Unreal. That's good. Hey, we can't leave Sean out. <laughs> For everybody that says Sean don't eat, <laughs> Sean do eat. Here you go, Sean. Thanks. All right, lunch time's over. Let's go find some more fish. Back to the old school ways. We're on the troll, we're looking for food. See if we can find one more species to mark off today. There's a couple different species in this lake. There's cutthroat, and I believe there's bull trout. So we're gonna have to find out. We're gonna see what all these things were on the graph as we were trolling through this area. But we're gonna give this a little while, see what we can find. Let's do it. Here you go, sir. Yep, here you go, sir. Cutting right. Just doing it. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, baby. That's a good one. That's what we're looking for. That's the one we're looking for. Oh, that hammered it, dude. Yeah, baby. Oh, dude, that's a big one. That's a big fish. What is that? Tip to the right. Tip to the right. Keep him out here. I'm going to get the net. Yep, that's exactly what we're looking for. That's a big bull, dude. That's a big bull. Yep, right when he gets up, finally right to the surface. Nice job, you're doing really good. Come on, I'm gonna pop up. Got him, got him, dude. Give me some. Yeah. Yes, ask and you shall receive. Look at this thing. All right, so these things are very protected. We got this catch and release style of net. So I'm gonna handle this fish through the net here. I'm not even gonna put my hands on it. But look at how unique this creature is. Incredible spots up and down. Ask and you shall receive. We said if we want to go find another species. We found nothing but rainbows so far today. We knew there were some other species in the lake. And we got it. That is a cool looking fish. That sure is. Wow. See you later, bud. <laughs> yeah! That's cool. That was awesome. That's cool. What a day. Well, we got some hungry dogs. And normally our catch and cooks are all about our appetite, but today, I don't feel like eating trout. So this catch and cook is all for the dogs, everybody. It's something I've, I've never really talked about, and you know, one thing in particular for myself is I feed little a lot of fish. Um, leftover fish, stuff that's cooked, obviously. Some, some animals can't have fish, some dogs don't do well with fish, but Little loves it, Odo loves it, and today's recipe is trout dinner for the pups. So I filleted out. The one hatchery fish that we actually kept today. And when we were fishing, if you're using bait, you have to keep the fish. So we kept the fish that we caught using the bait. Even if it's inside that plug like that, we have to actually keep those fish. So we kept them. But again, I don't feel like fish. I got ling cod in the freezer. I got halibut from some of these other awesome addicted episodes we've been filming lately. But I know my dogs are going to love this meal. And it's a great way to not let it go to waste. 
A lot of people go out, they catch their limited trout and they just let the stuff go bad. They throw it in the freezer, they don't eat it, they don't make good use of it. But I'd say when you feed your dogs and you feed them food that's better than what you can buy at the store, that's a good use of your trout. So I'm gonna mix up a little dish for these dogs. Stay tuned because all you pet lovers out there you might learn something new. You guys are gonna love this. All right, first ingredient to this delicious dog meal is one that we know is the dog's favorite. Bacon! So we're gonna go just two pieces of bacon because these dogs are on a diet. They're watching their figure, unlike their dad. I'm gonna lay those in there and that's gonna give us our little bit of grease. I don't wanna add any sort of vegetable oil or anything. I want these natural fats to actually cook this fish. And then I have a couple other ingredients I'm gonna add to this. And I have a feeling these pups are gonna love it. Hey Tiny, how you like your bacon? In goes our fish. I'm gonna try to keep that fish right on top of the bacon. Give it a nice little oil base for the sear. Ooh, goodness gracious. And now the thing is too, the bacon already is very salty because the process of baking bacon is adding salt to it. I'm not gonna add any salt, I'm not gonna add any sort of seasoning, it's not healthy for dogs. The bacon has plenty of salt in it already. It'll get some of that nice flavor into the fish. We want our dogs to enjoy the flavors of our success. Next step, can of green beans. And of course, a little dollop of mayo for flavor. Alrighty. Dog dinner is served. I'm gonna give Otis a smaller portion because she wasn't there. And then she's tiny dog. And then the tiny dog gets the big king portion here. I'm kind of chop it up a bit for him. Ooh, looks like I need a new tong. I've lost a tong. Okay, we're back. Back in action. Chop that up a little bit for him. There it is, everyone. Gourmet trout dog din din. Somebody got the memo. Hold on guys, it's way too hot. All right kids, here we go. Sit pretty, do a pretty dance. Do a dance. All the way around, one more. Good girl. Okay, here you go. Nope, nope, that's your sisters. That's your sisters. Here you go, buddy. Okay, tiny, nice shake. Sit, let me see the paw. Thanks, nice paw. Well, it's a meal fit for the king's dogs. What an incredible day it was, everybody. We literally caught fish on everything that we tried. My absolute favorite day of fishing in a long, long time. The title really fit today's video, catching a fish on all of my favorite techniques, and I loved it. First off, I wanna thank you all so much for being here on this video, and be on the lookout for more of these fun trout videos coming out soon. If you wanna see more videos just like this, go up here and click this link to the next video. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn those bells on, give this video a thumbs up, and comment below. Leave me the comment of the day just like this person right here. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. You stay fishy, we'll see you out there.